You are watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic is the importance of balanced mineral supplementation. Many experts believe that our soils today have been depleted of important mineral nutrients, which are the building blocks of life. My guests today have been helping people with mineral supplementation for over 20 years. If you are considering any type of vitamin or mineral supplementation, my advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. Welcome to the Wellness Hour, a penetrating look at a variety of health issues. Your host is the recognized expert on wellness issues, Randy Alvarez. You're watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today we have two guests. First, we have Jack Grogan, president of Biotrend Technologies, a health consulting company that specializes in the analysis of hair mineral tests. Mr. Grogan works with thousands of people doing hair mineral analysis as an aid in determining mineral balance and its relationship to health and wellness. He is a nutritional consultant and works one-on-one -on -one with clients that have all types of health concerns. Also joining us is Rick Wagner. Rick is the founder and CEO of Idon Incorporated, which manufactures and distributes a complete line of liquid mineral supplements. Rick supplements can be found on the shelves of just about every major health food store here in San Diego, including Henry's Marketplace and Jimbo's Health Food Store. Jack and Rick, welcome to the show. Thank you, Randy. It's a pleasure to be here. And the same, Randy. Today's topic is mineral supplementation. And uh, before we go into the benefits of these liquid minerals that, that you have and some of the follicle testing you're doing, let's start with your background and training. T tell me about yours, Jack. Uh, Randy, my degree is in public health with an emphasis in nutrition. I've been doing nutritional consulting now for over 25 years, literally worked with over thousands of clients over that period of time. And we use a variety of minerals in the mineral balancing program, but one of the ones that we've really focused in on a lot lately has been silica. Now, uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting about all this to me is that every now and then a question comes up from one of my clients about uh, if they should take this or take that, will it interfere with their program if they want to take something extra here and there? And some things do uh, not interfere, a lot of things do. Silica is one of the minerals that you can add to any mineral balancing program that will not cause it to get more disrupted. In fact, we use silica a lot of times uh, in young, very young children because it comes in liquid form. It essentially tastes like water that have high aluminum levels, for example. Over Now, there's nothing published on this, but in our uh, data that we've got, uh, uh, myself and uh, some of my cohorts, We've been able to track the uh, people, when people have high levels of aluminum, if we give silica effect, some people can't take a whole lot of things. Silica is one of the few things that you can take as an extra supplement that will not interfere with the other mineral balancing program. There's very few things that can do that. Silica is also, it's in a liquid form, it essentially tastes like water. Now we do a lot of mineral testing on children. Uh, in fact, even in adults that who they, where they can't take a lot of tablets or pills, either because they can't swallow them or they just don't want to do it. With children, up to a certain age, you can't really use tablets or uh, capsules. You've got to use a liquid of some kind. And particularly in the kids that where we do the hair testing for uh, ADD, attention deficit disorder and, and, and related issues, uh, in those people, many times they have high levels of the toxic mineral aluminum which we know is a neural poison. So you're saying that silica is, uh, is one of those things that helps the body remove? Helps the body remove oh, that uh, toxic metal. In fact, every toxic mineral will have a corresponding nutrient mineral that the body can use to help to get rid of it. Uh, so if a toxic metal is present, a lot of times what you need to do and within the framework of the balancing program is to use the natural antagonist to that toxic metal. Even though there are no published papers on this, myself and, and many other people are doing the same kind of work, have kind of gotten together on this. And we use silica on a regular basis to help to remove high levels uh, of aluminum. Okay, now with, uh, w w with you, you have uh, your own line of silica products Correct. That, that, that can be purchased in local health food stores. Right. What, uh, you know, what are people saying? The, feedba the feedback is so amazing, and, and just to step back a moment, uh, silica is the initial product that we developed, and we developed it because of a personal experience that I had, and it was related to calcium management. I had calcium uh, buildup on my neck. It stopped it. It removed it. My objective was to put together a mineral that was tasteless, easy to consume, inexpensive, and effective. And we've done all of that with this particular mineral. Okay, one of the reasons why I invited you on the show, 
I visit some of the health food stores like Jimbo's or Boney's, and, and uh, you know, people are talking about th these products, and I'm very skeptical. And, and the fact that there aren't any national public studies or big double-blind studies to prove what you're saying. All you have is anecdotal evidence. So what do you say to the critics that say, you know, you have no proof. You just have a bunch of people saying that they feel better. In fact, th th that's an excellent question, Randy. We have exceptional research that has been done not on people, although the, actually to back up, there are uh, some m numerous studies that have been done in Europe on individuals and different aspects of the application of silica. We have a book, actually, that if you call our offices, we'd be happy to. Now, silica is a mineral, is that correct? Silica is the second most prevalent element on this planet. It is essential for life, and... Our bodies have silica in it? Our bodies have... Uh, silica in our bodies is the seventh most prevalent element in our bodies. Well, how come you don't hear about silica? How come I've never heard about silica I, until I saw your product? It is the least known that we know of of the of the elements, and I don't have an answer for that. Okay, so the biggest. An, go ahead. I think there's an assumption about this. There is a lot of silica in certain plants and in grains and so on. However, the silica that's there is usually very closely bound to the fiber, and just because it's present doesn't mean necessarily that it's going to be absorbed very well. Uh, silica also occurs in a number of plants, uh, herbal extracts, and so on. The most two common probably are going to be horsetail extract and, and oat straw. The problem is that up until the time Rick put this together, that the best silica formulas that you could get would be extracts of those uh, particular herbs that gave you a considerable amount of the herb and a relatively small percentage of, of uh, bioavailable silica. Now, what Rick has done in, uh, in formulating his silica product, one tablespoon of that product will give you the equivalent of roughly 40 tablets or capsules of the others. There are also, particularly in horsetail, there's at least one antivitamin factor in horsetail. So um, uh, part of the trade-off, being able to get some bioavailable silica, is you have to take, especially the doses that, uh, that Rick is uh, making available to the public now, uh, you'd have to take enough of those capsules that you might be starting to impair the body's ability to utilize a certain vitamins as well by the time you're getting to that okay, dose. Let, let's start from the top. What are the, what are the clear-cut benefits, then, you have found with the silica mineral? Let, let, let's start from the top. When you, dr when, you when you put it in your mouth, you, you begin to experience, and, and drink it, you will begin to experience a healthier gum. You'll, uh, you, your uh, amount of uh, periodontal disease will, do, will go down. Uh, a lot of other issues, with just oral issues, will well, What is the mechanism? Away. What's causing uh, silica to help? the body uh, so, protect uh, itself. Let, let me f first of all, be, that's another question, and okay. it's a good one, too. Let me go through that. A as you swallow the silica, what it's doing uh, in your uh, digestive tract is rebuilding the, the uh, stomach wall. It assists uh, then in all of the uh, issues of uh, gastrointestinal problems that people are experiencing today. Acid reflux, acid heartburn, let all Let me just say one thing about the acid reflux. You know, initially, uh, when, we, when Rick put the silica formula together, its primary use was as an anti-inflammatory. It's very strongly connected in terms of tendon, ligament, connective tissue health, uh, uh, helps to remove calcium deposits, uh, is an anti-inflammatory from that respect. One of the other things that silica does is very interesting. It protects the mineral copper. We're not sure exactly how that uh, works, but copper is one of the most important anti-inflammatory nutrient minerals. Now. Initially, because of that, of course, the initial application of silica was going to be with uh, people who had pro-inflammatory concerns, the so-called itises that we talked about on the other show. I've got as many people or more people now using it for acid reflux. In fact, I'm kind of amazed by it. So do you know why it's working I'm for not really sure 100 percent why. The one thing that's kind of interesting about this, it does not, we know this for sure, it does not stop the production of acid. Now, in people with acid reflux disease, and in the, uh, the normal way that it's treated, the uh, acid production in the stomach is completely halted. The problem with that is that acid production in the stomach is there for the specific purpose of the initial breakdown of proteins. It's needed for digestion. So you miss the very first step in protein digestion if you're blocking the ability of the body to produce stomach acid. We think the way that the silica works is, as Rick had mentioned, in some way 
uh, helps to strengthen the, the tissue itself because remember, normal healthy stomach tissue can handle, it's meant to handle stomach acid without getting uh, damaged. Why is it then some people over a period of time that they produce some stomach, the amount of stomach acid they're producing that they tolerated years ago, they're not tolerating now. In fact, it's starting to damage their stomach and if it, if it splashes back up into the esophagus, it burns the esophagus as well. And literally I've had, and again, this has amazed me, literally I've had people, Randy, in just a couple of days telling me that this is the first time that they've had a relief from the GERD, that gastric esophageal reflux disease, in days. The first time that they've had this, this kind of relief in years. And this is on multiple medications and so on. And just recently, just in the last few months, more and more people are using it for that. And I've been very, very pleasantly surprised at that. Now, keep in mind, above and beyond that, they're still getting the other benefits of the silica, the calcium management stuff we talked about before. But this is unrelated to that. Uh, this is working in a mechanism that we don't really okay, understand well, then tell this me point. this. So do you come from the standpoint that we aren't getting the silica that we used to get 50 years oh, ago no because our soils it. are depleted? So what, what food sources were, are we or were we getting well, silica the, from? Well, the problem is that most of the silica is so tightly bound to the fiber in foods, like in, uh, especially in whole grains, it's the, the husk is where the silica is. But with a high fiber content, the fiber actually can impair the ability of those nutrients to be absorbed. In fact, that's true of some of the other minerals too that you would find that are associated with a very high fiber content in foods. They might be there on paper, but what you're actually being able to deliver to the cells in the body is a whole different ball game. And the silica is very tightly associated with the, uh, the types of fibers that you find in food that, that also reduce its uh, bioavailability. In a nutshell, the silica is the, absolute, the mechanism that's being utilized is that it is essential for collagen formation. That's where it, the, the primary role is playing. So that is in your, in your teeth and gums, in your stomach, in your joints. The, your body must have adequate amounts, adequate amounts of silica to be able to reproduce collagen. That's the connective tissue. It's the stuff that and holds that's you together. Holds us, okay. our glue that holds us together uh, effectively, as we are doing when we're 20 years old and 25 years old. Once we hit 40, 45, and 50, the ability to be able to reproduce the, the collagen begins to diminish. There, and you get, start you get to get wrinkles, uh, things dry up, organs dry up, joints get stiff. This helps re alleviate that because the body can then, it has that mineral that it needs to reproduce the collagen. Okay. And, and there is Go excellent ahead. research on that as well, by the way, Randy. I wanted to step back a minute and talk about, again, the uh, aspect of the testing. In, in this country, it, the UCLA School of Public Health in the 1970s, extensive research was done on silica with animals by Dr. Edith Carlisle. She was able to demonstrate using chickens, growing them from eggs, and restricting the diet of one of silica, only silica, and giving the other one a full complement of what that chicken would eat. The chick that did not get the silica grew to one half the size of a normal chicken, the, the, his sibling. Sure. That chicken had g gross abnormalities of, of skin, feathers, bone. It was a, a literally an ineffective animal and the reason was the, the silica that was the only thing that was restricted uh, the and the other aspect of that was we tested with or she tested with rabbits and identified that there literally was no toxic dose of this particular element and so you're the, saying that uh, there are no toxic doses none that we, of we have been able to silica establish. because I, I've seen your bottle and you know you gave me a bottle and I haven't started to take it yet but uh, it's it's nothing to worry about a cap full something like that anecdotally we had a, I had a woman call me uh, several months ago and said and said that she came home one day she had a bottle of it in the refrigerator and her young son was at the fridge drinking this thing like it was a bottle of uh, arrowhead water she said wait a minute wait a minute don't drink it all that's expensive stuff well it isn't really in re in a relationship to yeah, no, most of the supplements you you would get today but the, the downside of what happened was he had had a case of warts on his elbow that no one could get rid of. F seven days later, the warts were gone. Okay. How? So she caught him drinking silica, and then uh, a week later, the warts are gone. Right. 
and right. you don't know the mechanism. You don't know why it's working. No. But uh, and you're hearing this all the time. Yes. From the people buying it in the health food we stores. Feel, we feel the mechanism absolutely is it's a collagen issue. This 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 mineral activates the enzymes that reproduce collagen. Okay, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how Jack in in with 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 your practice of clients that you help with nutraceuticals. How, how you're using uh, silica and what, what uh, your clients are saying. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about liquid minerals. We'll be you're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about liquid minerals. Uh, let's start with you, Jack. Your company uh, that you founded, uh, you deal with the testing of, uh, you know, four minerals in hair. Right. Tell me about that. Well, what we do actually, we specialize in interpretation of the results of hair mineral analysis. We don't actually do the test ourselves. We have a lab that does the testing for us, and we get back the raw data. Now, once we get back the raw data, then, then we can take a look at that and uh, get a very good idea, of course, which, which mineral levels are high, which ones are low, the presence of toxic metals. In fact, to me, in, in many respects, the most important aspect of the whole test is what those ratios. There are seven key ratios. The seven most important interrelationships between minerals are listed as, uh, as these key ratios. In fact, if you take a look at a, at a given single mineral value, in fact, one which is very pertinent to today's show is calcium and calcium management, which silica directly affects, is uh, uh, if you look at calcium by itself, obviously you'll see the calcium is either above or below a particular reference range. As important as it is to know which minerals are high and which ones are low, and that is important, what's even more important is the relationships that these minerals have to each other. How much calcium is there compared to phosphorus? How much zinc is there compared to copper? Sodium to magnesium and so on. And this, there are seven uh, ratios, we call it the key ratios, that are the most important in giving us insight into the person's basic metabolism, how well they're managing calcium, which is right at the very top of the list. Now, if we take a look at this, this, the aspect of calcium just by itself, that there are three major ratios that give us an idea on how well that person's body is managing calcium. And as Rick mentioned, one of the primary factors with silica is going to be how well collagen is being uh, manufactured and remanufactured as we require it. The other thing is how well is calcium getting managed? It's not just how much calcium is there, but is that calcium getting to the bone? Remember, 99 plus percent of all calcium should be in the bones and the teeth. A relatively small amount of calcium should be available to the other cells in the body for normal energy production, for muscular contraction, and so on. But the lion's share of calcium should be in the bones. Silica is one of these minerals that helps to manage calcium, helps to pull it from places where it shouldn't be, and put it back into places where it should be. Okay, you're a certified nutritionist. Yes. Isn't this a little bit off the mainstream of what you would normally be telling uh, your clients? No, actually it's not. It's, it's right on target. I mean, for years and years, the whole idea of what we've been working with is balance. It's not taking X amount of a certain vitamin or taking a, a huge dose of this or another huge like dose of Like a ton of, of zinc else. for one thing. No, it, it, actually, it, it can that. be a problem. Uh, in fact, too much of a mineral is just as bad as getting too little. In fact, sometimes it's worse than getting well, too little. Well, how do you create a balance then? You create a balance by having a, a baseline, a benchmark. That's why we like the hair mineral test. Of all the testing procedures that we've taken a look at over the last 30 years or so, and there's been a bunch of them, the hair mineral test uh, is a non-invasive, painless way to get a very good look at what the levels of minerals are in the tissue that are available to the tissues in the body, and also, where do we go from here? It tells us how much calcium <coughs> is there compared to magnesium, the presence of certain toxics, and so on. It gives us a starting point of where do we go now, what direction do we need to move in, and to me, equally as important is in terms of knowing what to do is what not to do so that you don't create other imbalances down the road. And osteoporosis is a very good example of that because we have a lot of people now taking very large doses of calcium in an attempt to prevent osteoporosis when all the world's uh, medical research is showing that the countries that have the highest per capita intake of calcium also have the highest incidence of osteoporosis. If preventing or reversing osteoporosis was merely an issue of getting more calcium, then the countries that have the highest per capita intake of calcium would have the lowest incidence of osteoporosis, and that's just not what's happening here. Are you saying the silica, can, it, it works as a leaching process? It helps to, to mobilize it. It's not so much as a leaching. And, and we're, again, the mechanisms here are unclear, uh, but we know that if there's calcium in a spot where it shouldn't be, and you've got adequate doses of silica, that silica will start to mobilize the calcium from places where it shouldn't be, and either help to get it excreted from the body 
or put it back in places where it should. Let me give you just a real quick case history. Sure. One of my clients a couple years ago came to me, and um, I hadn't seen him for a while actually, and he went to the doctor with lower abdominal pain that was so severe that he needed uh, morphine-like drugs to control it. And even then, it, it didn't get rid of it completely. Finally, he had his parathyroid glands removed um, because he was the, the calcium levels in his blood were so imbalanced. But, and it got better for about three or four weeks, and he fell right back where he was before. And so we ran a hair mineral test on him, and we looked at how his body was managing calcium. Now, fortunately, all of his other mineral aspects, he didn't have a lot of toxic metals, all of his other stuff was actually in pretty good balance. But the three major calcium management ratios that you see on the hair test, the calcium to phosphorus ratio, the calcium to potassium ratio, and the calcium magnesium ratio were all skyrocketed. He wasn't managing calcium at all. And because he was feeling nauseous a good part of the day from the medic combination of medication and from the pain that he was under, he wasn't gonna take a lot of stuff. So we did one thing and one thing only. We got him silica. Now, we were heroic in the doses. Ordinarily... Now, why did you make that call? Because silica is the most, in, in my estimation, and from the, the, the practical experience that I've had with it, and the experience of others that, uh, that have shared that information with me, if you're going to pick one thing and one thing only to manage calcium, silica is the thing that you would utilize. So, we gave him heroic doses of silica. Ordinarily, a tablespoon a day. That's a half ounce a day. We gave him four ounces a day, a shot glass four times a day. Sure. It took about two to three weeks, and all of a sudden he's pain free. He went on a trip, and when he went on his trip, he left his silica in a hotel uh, about 500 miles away from where he was. So he went to, in fact, he called me on the phone frantic. He said, what can I get to hold me over? And so he bought a, uh, another version of a liquid silica, uh, which is not nearly as strong and so on. And it was a Band-Aid, and in fact, unfortunately, not a very good Band-Aid, because he was back in pain again in about three or four days. Now, that's been a couple of years. Now he's at the point where his dose now is about an ounce and a half a day, and he's holding himself. This is the longest he's been pain-free in the last five or six years. And his pain, he's a minister. And so he's dealing with people, he's dealing with pe people's problems day in and day out. It takes a lot of mental and emotional energy. And he was in such bad pain, he couldn't even do his job anymore. In fact, he could barely get out of a chair. And the pain Okay, this is one story one of many. Yeah, Are you saying, I mean, I, you it's hear this common, all the time. We get Both them. of you hear this we all the time. Them because I know day. that there is a, is not a secret world, but a, but a subculture of people that, that, that go to the health food stores that take you know, minerals like this, colloidal minerals, they take these things, and why isn't it getting to the mainstream uh, medical doctor? Well, it's starting yeah. to. I When's think it going to get part of the? Well, it's starting now, actually. And part of it comes actually from the patients telling the doctors, you know, look, it, I tried this, and I'm better. Now, for the physicians that have an open mind that are truly interested in this, they're going to pay some attention to that. Uh, the, well, the other thing that's important, and Jack, uh, Jack and I were talking on the way over to, fi in the filming, to the filming, and where we are with minerals and their, their relationship to enzymes and proteins is absolute cutting edge as far as the, the field of nutrition is concerned. It, and it also actually represents the, the ultimate building blocks of life. What are we really? We, what I like to tell people is, we are walking dirt. If you look around you today, mm. everything that is here is from the soil. And it is absolutely essential that you are in a proper balance with everything. But the silica is the second most prevalent element on, in the soil. It is, it, it's very, And there's very a important. deficiency, you're saying, and we're not getting enough of it because of our diets today. Is what you're saying. The, and primarily, it was, it's sourced in, in the grains, but it's in the outside husks of the grains, which 150, 200 years ago was all utilized, ground up, so we're not eating stone that today. grinding uh, 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 implements. We're not getting anything like that. Even, okay, if we're, you were, even if you were, that's so tightly uh, associated with the fiber that the fiber can actually inhibit the bioavailability of that. So just because it's there on paper, and Rick makes a good point here too about using whole grains. When you're using the whole grains and then you're cooking it afterwards, you're getting a, there's, there's a certain extraction process in that that does make silica more, bio, more bioavailable. However, even with that by itself, you're looking at um, 
the silica being so closely associated with these fibers that many times they're not getting absorbed very well. Plus, you're not getting anywhere near the abundance of the, that that we ate even. Okay, well, we're going to have to take ago. a quick break. And, well, we, and the other issue is we've broken it down now to an atomic level. Really? And the body can t absorb it. it. I mean, it sees it, it says, aha, I need this. And it's not toxic. People are feeling better. Right. Uh, we're going to go to a break. Uh, mention where they could get it. All of the local health food stores in San Diego carry our silica. Uh, and if that is They unavailable, can call you directly? You, they, and they can call us directly. Because you love talking about silica. Oh, I mean, if they get me on the phone, <laughs> it, it's hard to get me off. Okay, good. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about supplementing with minerals. We'll be right back. You're watching a special edition of The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about mineral supplementation. Now, tell me about this. Uh, who is a candidate, or an ideal candidate, uh, for silica, for this particular mineral that uh, you guys seem to love? I'm going to go out on a limb, Randy, and I'm, and I'm going to say that everyone past the age of 40 is a candidate for this particular mineral. I will never stop taking it as a, as a supplement. And if I had only one to take, silica would be the one that I is would take. Is that right? Take. Absolutely. And we, we, if you've got teeth and gum problems, stomach problems, joint problems, skin, hair, and, and nail problems. The, the silica is effective in all of those. Uh, it helps with wrinkles. Uh, it, it helps with, contrary to what you might believe in looking at me, hair, hair growth. It helps um, in arthritis. It helps in, in healing. Hey, great. I want to thank both of you for coming on the show. Very interesting. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Randy. You've been watching the Wellness Hour. I wish you good health. Thank you for joining us for the Wellness Hour, an in-depth look at a variety of health issues. Your host was Randy Alvarez, the recognized expert on wellness issues.